Hi there, this is part two of the series I'm doing on looking after this temple, blessing the temple of the Holy Spirit, your body. And today we're going to look at the book of Daniel. And if you could turn in your Bibles to Daniel uh, chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 3, it says the king of that day had ordered the chief of his officials to bring in some of the sons of Israel. And he said specifically that he wanted youths in whom is no defect, that were good looking, showing intelligence in every branch of wisdom, endowed with understanding and discerning knowledge, and who had the ability to serve the king. So he had a specific um, request. He wanted guys that were shining, right? So in that group, Daniel and his friends were chosen. But in verse 8, it says Daniel had a resolve. He said, but Daniel made up his mind. Remember that one. Daniel made up his mind. That's a key. That he would not defile himself with the king's choice food or with the wine which he drank. So he sought permission from the commander of the officials that he might not defile himself. And God granted him favor and compassion in the sight of the commander. But the commander said, but Daniel, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit apprehensive because if you don't eat what the king's giving you, then what if you get all gaunt and, you know, and the king looks at you and says, what's the matter with you? The rest of them are looking really good, but you're looking like frail. What am I going to do? And Daniel said, don't worry about it. Just let me eat some good, wholesome, whole food vegetables and some, some good quality water, and I'll prove to you that we'll be in better shape than those who are defiled by the king's food. And so the, um, the chief that was looking after him gave him permission. And sure enough, Daniel and his friends that went for this turned out better than all the others, stronger, more vibrant. They shone. They were smarter. Their, their, their mind was brighter. Now, I want to share a few things. And one of them is about um, he refused to be defiled by the king's food. Now, in our day and hour, we have such bad food on the market today. This is, this is well known. You can research this on the internet. Everywhere you look, it will be proven that the average food that you buy in the supermarket is loaded with damaging chemicals to your body, with hormones. In fact, um, the chickens that you eat, the milk that you drink, the beef that you buy, um, even a lot of the uh, fish and that that is uh, farmed out, they are fed hormones and chemicals and antibiotics to make them grow big fast. You know, I was out, you know, a while ago buying some chicken breast, uh, boneless, skinless chicken breast, you know, because we think, oh, that's cool, it's lean, it's got no fat on it, it's pure meat. But you know, when I looked at those chicken breasts, I remember this day, the light went on, and these chicken breasts were massive. And I remember thinking, oh, perfect. I can feed a, a whole group of us on that. I'll just cut it up into three pieces. There's enough off this one breast. I can feed six people, three off of each side of the breast. And then I thought, just hold it. I've never seen a chicken with breasts that big? Never. I mean, if this chicken was walking around, it would fall over with a breast that size. And then I thought, how did it get such a big breast? And this is how it got such a big breast. It was fed hormones. In its food, it was fed hormones that made that chicken grow because breast meat is the most expensive part of the chicken. So they put hormones that make the chicken grow breasts fast. And you know what? These kind of hormones are given to like transgender people and also to make men grow breasts. They're giving this stuff to chickens so that they grow the breasts big so that they can get more money. It's all about money. So that the chicken breasts can be sold for a big price. They can make the breasts big, get lots of weight on it. And when you eat it, what are you eating? You're eating the hormones that make the breasts big. Do you wonder sometime why? Some young girls today are starting to develop at nine years of age, 10 years of age, and they're starting to develop breasts. A lot of it is because those hormones are in the food. It's the same with beef, cattle. They're fed hormones, antibiotics, chemicals to make them grow fast and big. Why? So that the uh, people who wholesale the, the meat out and retail the meat out can make more money. You know, they get it to grow faster with less food. Uh, they can 
chop up the, the meat quicker so they don't have to look after the cattle as long, and they can, they can make more money that way. But in the meantime, that, all that hormone is going into you and your children. That milk that you buy, that milk comes out of cows who are fed hormones to make them lactate, to make, make them produce more milk. You know, the sacks are getting bigger and bigger and bigger because they're being fed hormones to produce more milk, but your little babies are drinking that milk. It's going into you, all the dairy products, it's going in there. And so the food we eat today, especially in certain nations, like the United States of America, does not have real tight regulations on it. Some nations have tighter regulations, but basically we've got a nation of fat, heavy, unhealthy people because of what we're putting inside the temple. And many Christians are overweight and sick. And you know what? Especially in the United States of America, I believe that the, the, the um, uh, health providers, the, the pharmaceuticals are involved in this too because they know that if you put bad food into your system, you're going to get sick. If you get sick, they can sell you your medication. If you become a diabetic, they can, they can have you every single month buying your insulin and everything that you need to manage that. So you see, this is a cycle that's all working together. We have to break the cycle. Daniel refused to be defiled by the king's food. He refused. He made a quality decision to put only good food in him. And he said, I'm not going to eat that fancy meat. I'm not going to eat their, their special wines, which was actually loaded. Actually, when you do a study on it, it was all that stuff had hormones in it to make the men more manly and to make things develop more in them so that they could serve the king better. He refused to be defiled by all the chemicals and the drugs that were injected into it. And he only ate wholesome food. I wonder if God is asking us to do the same. Some people say, but I can't afford to buy all the, the whole foods that is, has no hormone, no antibiotics, no chemicals in it. You know what? I don't think you can afford not to. If you will get used to eating smaller amounts of food, it'll do good for your waistline, number one, but then you're putting good foods inside your system. Now, in our last lesson, we looked at Galatians 6 where it says, God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. If you sow hormones into your body, you're going to reap the influence of that. If you sow antibiotics in, do you know what ruins immune systems? Antibiotics. Antibiotics ruin it. It, it damages it. That's why a lot of these super bugs don't have any antibiotics left that will kill them because they've, they've morphed and mutated into strains that are resistant to the antibiotics out there. Why? Because we're all ingesting effects of antibiotics by the, the animals we eat, by the eggs that we eat, by the milk that we eat. There are, all those animals are injected with antibiotics because the farmers know that they only have to keep those animals alive for a short period of time. They don't care about their immune system. They just don't want them to get sick or get diseased so that they lose the animal. So right from when they're young, they get fed antibiotics and hormones and chemicals, and then you ingest it. So what happens to this temple? I think Daniel had a key. He refused to be defiled. Maybe it's time that we really consider that, that we put goodness into this temple. What, it would be like, what would it be like if God's people started using wisdom in what they put into their bodies? If we use wisdom on how we treated this temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit, this body that houses the Spirit of God, we would be brighter, we would have more wisdom, our body would function better, we wouldn't be fat with excess of weight that causes other health problems, we wouldn't get sick, we would eat well. You know, and there's lots of keys that can be given when you study it out, it's just amazing. And I remember when God started working on me through the fast that I did in 2012, just before Rosh Hashanah, is that I did that fast and he gave me insight into how to look after the temple of the Holy Spirit. And out of that insight, I was given the course, Power, Weight Loss, and Rejuvenation, so that we can be everything that we need to be for Him. I want to encourage you to pray about how you treat the temple. I believe that in this coming year, we are going to see healings 
The Spirit of God is going to honor the way we treat our body. Our bodies are going to get healed. We're going to have a new lease on life because we're going to start sowing into this body what it needs. And we'll be like Daniel. The outcome was Daniel and his friends who ate the good wholesome food and denied the food that would defile them. They rose up above everyone else. They were better, they were brighter, they had more wisdom, they were shinier, they were in, in physical fit more than all the others that ate the defiled food. So let's pray about that in this season. I want you to really consider it. It's important.